most important part of this project is it's brought a diverse set of people from the community together to work together to provide information for our management of our resources in the Central California coast. CCFRP is a collaborative project to evaluate the performance of marine protected areas along Central California. And essentially what we're doing is using hook and line surveys to look for changes in species compositions, lengths, and catch rates of nearshore fishes, both inside and outside of marine protected areas. And we've been doing this since they were implemented in 2007 to look at changes over time to see if MPs are doing what they were intended, which was to increase the, the size and abundance of fishes in their bounds. So around the world, MPAs have been used for conservation and fisheries management. In 2006, we developed an alliance of fishermen, scientists, and non-governmental organizations, conservation organizations, to catch, tag, and release fishes inside and near MPAs in California. The result has been tremendous. We've learned a lot about fishes in the MPAs, a lot about the MPAs, and we've worked with more than 700 volunteer anglers in that time and tagged more than, and released more than 45,000 fishes to learn about our Central California fish. Every fish that we catch, we identify the species, we measure uh, the total length, so that's the tip of the snout to the end of the tail, and then we will use the timed fishing to calculate catch rates. Um, so these are the sorts of things that we're looking for, uh, potential differences inside and outside marine protected areas, and then changes over time. So those are the big things. We also record the condition of the fish and, and how, how, um, how they've been affected by barotrauma, so we can kind of look at survivorship, and then also we record spatial information so that any fish that we've tagged, uh, we have a starting GPS point, and then hopefully we'll get an end GPS point so we can see where they're moving. And we've seen some really cool stuff like black rockfish traveling all the way from Monterey to Oregon um, in the matter of a few months, which is pretty impressive. So I'm more in charge of data entry, so making sure that every all of those things that we write down on the boat actually make it into the database so we can use those data in the future, and then also quality control. Um, so making sure that some protocol that we do, that we started in 2007, still holds true now, even though we've had um, staff changes and things like that. The volunteers are so important to our program and really the success of our program, it, we wouldn't be successful without them. And for us to recognize them and recognize their dedication and um, participation and enthusiasm in our project is so important. You know, we have people who have been with us since our inception and have come out, you know, multiple days throughout the seasons and for multiple seasons. And we've kind of built this relationship. We always kind of um, joke about it at the beginning of the season that it's kind of like a family reunion. So the first day on the boat, everyone's, you know, giving hugs and asking how, you know, people's you know, summers have been, that sort of thing. So it's really nice. It's kind of our little CCFRP family. Um, so it's really cool to be involved, not only on the science side, but also kind of the social side as well. As scientists, we get much more accurate data by involving the fishing community in our research. Additionally, I think the fishermen get information out of us. They, they uh, become stakeholders in this project. Um, they learn a little bit about where the, the information is going that they're helping to collect. I think it's valuable for both sides.
what are we collecting all this information for? Is it for my database? No, it's to make management decisions. It's to inform politicians, managers, resource managers of what scientists are seeing in the natural world and so they can make better decisions for management. As well as conservation and preservation of things that we're aiming to project but sometimes fail. Management's constantly evolving with new strategies. Right now we have a huge emphasis on spatial management where we're drawing lines on a map. But what are the consequences of that? This is, this is a new process. So we, we need to continue to collect information to inform future decisions as well as understand the consequences of, of things that we've tried for conservation and preservation. So for me, this has just been a tremendously uh, satisfying project professionally. You know, as a scientist, most of the first part of my career was doing research that was important to other scientists and uh, was important to a, a small community of people who were exploring very interesting questions and, and problems. Uh, but this project is different in that it's using science for the value that it can bring to society. and it's deeply satisfying to be doing work as a scientist that is important to the community and important to, to government agencies and in the end is is really using science to create great value for society. CCFRP is really great because it incorporates members from the fishing community in the scientific uh, process and we are trying to work with all of these different groups to incorporate different expertise to collect data that are useful for everybody, everyone who uses the resource.